Okay, let's see if we have any issues with this. Because if we do, it's 12 seconds. No, I'm good. Okay, now by what I could see, the wolf won. So we are doing the wolf. Um, and for that, I'm going to use the... Um, Remember I told you that whenever you're trying to imitate metal, and there's actually a, an article with a tutorial on my website uh, showing you what kind of mixes to use for the various uh, four metals. So you don't have high sherry, so you don't have to worry anymore about, you know, antiquing and doing all that patina and stuff. This way, you can simply just use the metallic thing. So, um, I'm out of, actually, I don't think I'm out, but I just didn't have any conditions. So, uh, I made the uh, uh, two parts black, one part silver mix that I will be using for uh, doing that um, pendant wolf. And, in order to do that, of course, you will have to have some type of pendant. Hi, Debra. And something I wanted to show you, talking pretty bezels and stuff. I found this on Amazon, and I think it is in my influencer store. Um, but it took, gosh, it took like four weeks for me to get it because it's coming from um, China. But I just got it. I didn't even uh, try it. But I thought that, see, this part, because it's got it's an embossing folder. Hi, Teresa. That's got an in and an outy. And I thought that it would be absolutely fabulous for uh, bezels. So let's see how fabulous it is, if, if it is usable for bezels or not. So I'm going to just get a little slice of this and I would want the bezels to be with the dots going out, right? So let's just get it in. I didn't put any armor roll on it, but it should be okay. But yeah, I realized that one of the reasons the the last Facebook Live was not that good is because my house is a double brick, including the interior walls. So I don't have that good of a signal from the Wi-Fi gateway. Actually, the desktop is directly connected with an Ethernet cable but the cable doesn't reach all the way on the table, so it's impossible to place the um, laptop on it. So I thought, why don't I just bring the laptop in the kitchen that's closer to the... I have no table in the living room. So, yeah, I think it should work pretty. Well, this is in a hurry, so but it should be very pretty let's see and then if we cut these of course it will be on a thinner setting of the pasta machine not so thick but still and of course with a lot more care than what i just did but yeah you can do pretty bezels for this If the camera wants to, you know, my permanent thing with the camera. And there we go. It's quite pretty, isn't it? And then I also thought, you know, these beautiful butterfly wings, they should be just gorgeous. Hi, Chris. So, let's get on with the um, wolf head. 
In order to do the wolf head, I forgot to bring my acrylic block. So I was sure I was going to forget something. Hi, Eleni. Let's hope it's just that. Now, generally, to make eyes for any totem animals, hi, Nasreen, to make eyes for any animals, just use, if you work with the Primo, I prefer to use the pomegranate red because you only need two itty-bitty bowls that will imitate the coral. But in any other clay, just use plain red. That's fine. So let me put this aside for later. And um, obviously you saw how that pendant is done. And I thought because so many people have asked me about that pendant, how do you do the wolf head? Um, generally speaking, you don't have to make it that big. But generally speaking, when you're trying to, um, to make something in Native American style, and um, as I have explained in my uh, last year, I think it was in like June, I made a Native American high colleen, a Native American uh, style uh, jewelry set. And it's in two parts. And in the first part, I explained uh, what's the difference between in the style of and inspired by. And that if you want to work in the style of, then you have to respect certain things that are specific to the Native American uh, silver jewelry, silver and turquoise jewelry. Uh, one of the things is um, they put the turquoise is very rarely you find when you, and I'm talking about one piece of turquoise, uh, very rarely you find uh, them being very uh, high Cecil. Um, you know, a defined regular shape, like an oval, hi Judith, like an oval, like a round or something. Generally speaking, it, the piece of jewelry kind of is created around the stone. So the best thing is to just make one of those four turquoises if you want it to look really, you know, in the style and really realistic. Just make a four turquoise and shape it however. You know, just get the, the whole blob. And uh, I would suggest I did uh, not very long ago, uh, was it a Kinman, Kingsman or a Royston? Do you remember, Teresa? Turquoise, I did some turquoises for that, for oxidized silver. But anyway, uh, that's mostly the type of, um, bonjour Judith, uh, the type of turquoises that you find most often in the Native American jewelry. It would be usually the Kingsman or the Royston uh, turquoise. But and generally, Nevada turquoises, but uh, the most often you will find that type of turquoise that has a fairly heavy mat matrix um, that's got quite a bit of copper, high IFE, quite a bit of copper, um, some brown. Now, depending if it's Kingsman, you might find the so-called black matrix. That's not really black. It's like a dark gray with some pyrite inclusions. Remember the the fool's gold that's not really gold it's more like a silverish gold but um do that kind and remember i told you i showed you in that one how to make a um, matrix texture sheet and how to make the the whole combination so that when you place the texture sheet and then you shave you will have the so-called four turquoise pieces in the middle of the uh, matrix and then you just can use that as a veneer so uh, if you decide to to make a piece of jewelry native american style using a wolf head totem just make 
your turquoise cabochon of a more irregular shape you know like this would be fine or whatever you want and then start building the pendant let's say around that shape for example if i would have this shape of a cabochon and i would put it on the um, clay that would be the base i would probably want it to be like this then i would have room for the wolf head here or i can put the four turquoise on the bottom and have the wolf head here and then you know it's up to you but uh design your pendant around the wolf once you have designed your pendant figure out how much room you have and usually what i do i sculpt the wolf on the acrylic block because it's easier to you know move around and then i place it on the pendant uh, sometimes i even bake the rest of the pendant and then i add the wolf head but essentially when you have the the specifics of the uh, wolf head when represented in jewelry is that number one it will be very stylized you are not going to make something that's realistic and lifelike uh, remember most of the Native American jewelry is made with sand casting is made with um, punch stamps um, you don't have really a lot of sculpting much so um, you have to make it very simple so what you have to think the wolf has a long muzzle right and has fairly long ears but here be very careful about the ears because you don't want to make it looking like a donkey <laughs> um and then it has for a canine it has fairly wide um head compared to the muzzle so whenever stylizing something you kind of enhance the definitory traits of that something so talking about the wolf what we are going to look for would be the long nose the big ears and the difference between the skull itself and the muzzle so obviously we start with a blob make sure that you have no folding lines left on your blob then start leave yourself enough here first flatten it a bit and why is it uh, easier to do it like this because you can also bake separately uh why there's no reason why you can bake separately the pendant and bake separately the wolf head and then remember how i showed you to attach um, gemstones or four gemstones to something that's already baked uh put a little piece of uh, raw clay in between the two pieces of course with bake and bond so we have the blob we flattened it now let's make it a little bit triangular but keep the flattening because the moment you press here it's going to get fatter here so exactly like you would for a cane keep it triangular it's not hard at all to make it so we have now we have it triangular now holding here you start dragging some of the clay from the muzzle and the same on this side drag it up so now we have this okay we still have the triangle here now let's drag more of the clay here towards the sides and I'll show you what we do with the sides here in a minute. But just drag the clay. It should be fairly soft because you just 
uh, made the mix, but if you have a mix already done, then make sure that your clay is nice and soft. Now, Cernit, yeah, it's okay, but you know, it's a little bit too soft for sculpting, generally speaking. So you can try the Cernit if you want. Now, at this point, we have here will be the um, brow bone. And from this part, we are going to actually make the ears. So we start shaping like this. Do you need me to get the camera closer for you to see better? Let me try and do that. Is it still focusing? Yeah, it's okay. So it looks almost like a little cow at this point right but so first we dragged on the top to form the brows hi Catherine and then we drag on the sides where we will form the ears and now we can actually start shaping it better we need the nose the muzzle to be a little bit longer so let's elongate it Now, obviously, we need the ears to be a little bit higher. So let's push them higher. It almost looks like a little devil, of course, but it won't stay like this, obviously. Now, we need to make the, the dip that's between the skull and the ear itself. So again, Press and pull gently, just a little bit. Another thing, the year will not start here it will actually start a little bit more towards the back. So let's get it more towards the back. So just press here to get the ear more towards the back. And now we can start gently shape it. But mostly, you'll do all this with your fingers, honestly. But this is mostly to get your... proportions right. Because you want, when you look like this, you want the ear to start on the same line with the muzzle. Okay, on the same line with the muzzle. So it should start pretty much here. And bring it a little bit higher because it doesn't start at the middle of the cheek. It starts a little bit higher. Yeah, it got deformed, but it's fine. We'll form it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't trim mine. So we got the approximate shape of our wolf head. Now we can start refining it. Number one, we need this brow to be more defined. So let me put it on the acrylic block at this point. And I'm going to press here. Another thing that you want to do, and you'll have to lift it a little bit, the chin is recessed. Hi, Nicole. So you want to do it a little bit going up. Don't make the muzzle pointy. 
the nose is almost as wide as the tip of the muzzle. So what you're looking for right now is to have flat sides. Remember, we are stylizing it a bit. I mean, quite a bit. Flat sized and sloping inwards towards the chin. Then we want actually to enhance even more the brow here and then refine a little bit the shape of the skull and now you need to do this part nicely and round Okay, camera is losing focus. Hi, Judy. And you want to push in a little bit above here. Just push a little bit in. And now we pretty much have the shape of the head and we need to take care of the ears. Flatten the ear. And smooth it out. Yeah, we will cut the shape, proper shape in a minute. It won't be a Mickey Mouse. But you want it to be nice and flat. And this area, smooth it out. And now we can cut the ear. So we want it fairly pointy. Don't make it in a sharp point now. And also I need to kind of figure out if they are both equal in length. Smooth out the edges. Remember, one thing that you need to be very careful uh, what acrylic you have. I would suggest you get, these are about five bucks at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to try and see if I can find any on Amazon. They are for stamp, because not uh, all acrylic is not attacked by uh, by clay. But generally speaking, if you just uh, wipe it with alcohol, because mine may get sticky sometimes, but you wipe it with alcohol because you get residue on it and it should be just fine. Okay, start thinning out the ear towards the tip. And figure out if they are in any way different. Obviously, 
and this one is too wide it's almost like an anubis and they can go a little bit shorter so And again, you don't want a pointy tip. Kind of round it up a little bit. And this one just needs to be shortened. But yeah, I think I got this one when I used my 50% coupon at Hobby Lobby. Okay, this one is still too wide here. Yeah, I forgot to get my paintbrush, but I think I can find something here that I can use instead of my blue paintbrush. So we go again very careful on the finishings here. And let's shape the year. Let me see what I got here. And this should work. So usually I use the the tip of a paintbrush handle. Hold your finger here behind, and then press with the tip of a press the paintbrush handle inside, and then gently bring the edges of the ear in. You should get something like this. And the same for the other ear. And now you can actually get it oops get it properly set and at this point i would start putting it on a tile so that i don't have to remove it to bake it as i said it's the best is to bake it separately and then place it on the pendant so I'm going to put it on the tile and at this point I'm going to shape it shape it uh, in the final form. And now you can bring the tips a little bit folded in. You know, I don't do it before I put it in because it might not be the proper position. Oops, sorry. So get the tips a little bit folding, folded in. And now you can check if your wolf head is properly done. Then you get either a... Um, your exacto knife you know that I prefer to use this. And now we are going to start to make what would be the equivalent of um, punch stamps. Generally speaking, we need to give the... Um, let me take off my, my glasses. The nose defined. And that will be one line like this. Going all the way down. And 
and then you come with one line from underneath and put one line here and one line here then you start making the tribal marks Sorry, I didn't notice I was not in the... You can imagine if with my regular monitor, I have issues seeing when I take off my glasses. If I go with the laptop monitor, it's going to be even worse. And usually I put some more tribal markings here vertically. Just make sure that you go from the other side. So you don't have these little raised areas of clay. Now let's do some tribal markings above the eyebrow. Below the eye area. I mean, it's up to you, but generally they would go pretty much like that. You don't have to put the ones on the bottom. And some vertical ones. And then we are pretty much done. Yeah, I did the wrong line here. We are pretty much done except for the eyes. Now we need to set the eyes. So get your, make sure that they are um, symmetrical and put them a little bit more towards the sides. So let's say here and here. And then just enhance this area. Here, both stylus would be the best, but I forgot to bring it. Actually, let me get it because I need to bring the wax as well. Now, Prima Marketing Waxes can be baked. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, Celine. Who did I miss? I didn't miss anybody. So, uh, Prima Marketing Waxes can be baked. So, we can bake the, the wax on it and it will hold even better. So, let me finish making the um, holes for the eyes. And if you want, you can put, sometimes I put some 
tribal lines here as well at the edge of the ear. It just gives more character. And you can get one here too. Now, first put your wax on because you don't want to mess up the red and put wax on the red. So that's the, the secret, put it on before you bake it. And see how it's already antiqued. Of course, if I don't do it on the camera, to have to reach to. So I make it much prettier. But and this is to show you how to make it, not for me to make it super duper. Yes, we can rearrange the ears after we finish putting the wax on. If you don't have this wax, you can use the Gilder's paste after you bake it. You can use the Inca Gold before you bake it. Remember, with the Inca Gold, uh, you need to apply it before you bake it because it's an acrylic and the heat will set it better. And the same goes for acrylic paints. Put them on before you bake the piece. Or if you put them on a, an already baked piece, return the piece to the oven for like 10 minutes to get the acrylic all nice and set. Okay, let me clean my finger. And then we'll put in the coral eyes. And we have here these little blobs that will only need a little bit of them. Just make sure that they are equal because you don't want one eye sticking out more than the other. Yeah, this is a little more delicate. And ta-da! It's ready to be baked. It makes it look like silver. That's what the wax does. Let's see if we can get it. So it will be something like this. Let me bring the one that's already made. So
So once the uh, wax is all hardened and buffed, it makes it look like a metal. I use the Prima Marketing Art Alchemy Metallic Old Silver. But yeah, this is how it looks like when it's... Let me try to make this... see I used pretty much this and I said you don't have to make them all the same here I use some tribal lines that are much finer and you don't have to make them all look the same you can do a little bit of different stuff but you can see actually, let me buff it some more but you can see how it makes the whole thing look like very, very metallic-y. This one was initially done with Gilder's paste and then I, uh, I applied some of the Art Alchemy on it too because I think that it does a much better job in giving the look of full metal. You see how beautifully it buffs. And there we go. Come on. It makes it look exactly like silver. Yeah, the feathers, I have a tutorial on how to sculpt feathers like this. And they are really very easy to to make. And the same is the, I think I show also in the Native American jewelry set how to sculpt these and how to sculpt the desert rose. The desert rose is another um, element that's specific to the Native American jewelry. And generally speaking, you find only um, geometric uh, decorations because as I said they are um, a stamp pun uh, punch stamps uh, but the only elements that you will find that are not geometric are pretty much the desert rose and the feather and the feather is as I said super simple you just grab a piece of clay where's my acrylic block you make a sausage. You taper it. And then you flatten it. I mean, this one a little bit too big. And then what you need to start with is to create the quill. And you can do that with your exacto knife. You can do that with a sculpting tool. This is the etch and pearl. But you need a quill in the center. See, you create a quill. And then you simply do the feathers do the feathery part you can make it more And there is a little trick to make it look more realistic. I'll show you here in a bit. And I showed it in that tutorial. Number one, make sure that your lines go all the way on the end. 
Yay, give me likes, give me likes. I see them traveling around the, across the screen. Okay, and let me show you the trick. See how you have the lines at the end? Watch this. And don't do right one after the other. have a little corner here and there. But see, by separating here and there, you create all that feathery look and then you can remove the ones that are all the way at the end. Okay. And as I said, make sure that your lines go all the way to the edge. Don't stop. And then you simply remove it. Of course, do the same on the other side and simply remove it from the acrylic block and place it wherever you want to place it. It will go just perfectly. The desert rose is the simplest thing in the world. You just make six blobs equal because remember always when you try to imitate something made out of metal if you want to be successful in the way that your final piece would look like think how the metal is worked because um, I see a lot of pieces that, don't get me wrong, they look beautiful. But when you have this, I'll show you in a second. When you have something like this, When you have something like this on a piece that's supposed to imitate silver, copper, whatever, it will take away from the realism right away. Why? Because unless you're talking PMC, this is not how, not how those metals are worked like. Yes, you have filigree, but the filigree is like sewing thread thin you will not have this type of element on a piece of jewelry made out of copper or bronze or silver. So let's get back to the desert row. So I have six little blobs, right? And let's say that we place it on a pendant. This is the pendant. Where's my blob? Here's my blob. So this is the pendant. One, two, why five? Because the wild rose has five petals, usually. Sometimes you might find the six, some pieces that have six petals, but most of them have five. Why the six blob? Because that goes in the middle. So we have this right now, right? And then grab your ball stylus. And then place one more in the middle. An alternate way to make it. Okay, come on camera. Come on, come on. 
An alternate way to make it is simply like if you would make a miniature rose. Again, you do the blobs. And I think that this is how I did it in the Native American jewelry piece. Okay, this blob is too big. And you always have to make sure that your blobs are equal. It's up to you if, you if you can do that by hand without measuring. If you need measuring, that's fine. So you get your blobs, you flatten them like for making a miniature rose. Not that flat though. You only need a flattened round shape. And then you simply put them there. Oh, come on, get off my finger. Oh, come on. Do you talk to your clay too? Why did I flatten all of them? I don't know. Oh. I only needed five flattened. The sixth one goes in the middle. So you place them like this. And then you put a blob in the middle. That's another way of making the desert rose. So it's up to you how you decide to do it. And there's another, hello, Sophie. There's another, is the pointy petals desert rose. And that you can use the, one of the techniques that's got been around for years for making, um, oh, whatchamacallit, uh, lilac flowers. Only that instead of cutting it in four, you need to cut it in five because five petals, obviously. Or you can cut it in uh, six, as I said. But what you do, Four, five. If you watch uh, Rusalina, for example, you'll see on a lot of her tutorials how she makes the smaller flowers. You'll see this technique on how to make. I hope to be able to make it. I don't know. There's some storms lurking around, and it really messes up with my hands. So at this point, you just oh, not this one. Where's my other one? There you go. And just open them and flatten them a little bit. And then you simply, but see, it's exactly like a little lilac bloom, only that it's got 
five pointy instead of four rounded. And you just simply trim it at the base and place it on with the little blob in the middle, of course. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. And of course, you can refine it a little bit after you put it there, but essentially, this is how it goes. Good night. You be well. Okay, so this is how it is. Yeah, you want these a little bit higher and a little bit, uh, they got a little too straight here. because you want them folding inwards not perfectly straight yeah pretty much like this so all this all this needs to do is to get baked and then once you bake it you put it on the pendant, and then once everything is baked, you buff it, and it looks like this. So there we go. And let me do a little bit of an extra thing, because <coughs> I promised Catherine that when I jump on a live, I'll show her uh, the thing with the proportion on, the, um, on a skull. Because she's trying to do a sugar skull. And she has a little bit of trouble with the proportions. So, start with the blob. And I told her at one point that whenever you try to get the proportions of a skull, uh, think of a light bulb. Okay? So, let's do this slightly ovalish. Okay, in the same direction ovalish. And then cut it in half. One half will be the base. Now, what you want to do, because this will be the base, okay? What you want to do is, number one, the jawline, usually the mandible, is a little squarish. Okay, so let me flatten this up nicely. The mandible is a little bit squarish, so first cut. And try to make the cut straight because I don't manage to make it straight. And there we go. And then you'll have this straight and this straight. And then here is just the rounded skull. Now for the top layer, as I told her, think of a light bulb. So get back to the pretty much the same size that you have underneath only that here this area should be about even half of the top part of the skull. And 
and also the teeth generally start at about the about the middle of the eye socket of course each person is different and remember this is just to show the proportions Now, careful with the nose. The nose will start about here and it will have two. There are two things here that get into one, so it will be slightly triangular. then you'll have the tooth line that generally starts about here and the bottom teeth are about here so you have the middle right here of my glasses and get this higher okay so your middle would be about here remember that when you have the teeth in a skull it's not like the teeth in real life. You will be able to see the tooth and the root. So, and you generally see about six of the teeth. And the ones on the edge, you see kind of half of them because of the curvature of the mandible. But yeah, it would be pretty much like this. And then you can bring it in. Place it on the bottom. Because the thing is, what she was trying to do was to make a smiling skull. Now, let's bring this in to unite. This is supposed to be the mandible right what the heck is this so the mandible bone should be united here And if you want to make the skeleton smile, you don't work on the teeth to go higher. Because when you smile, your teeth don't go wider. You work on here. Let me find something that would work properly. You work on here. You make this area go higher. And you can even bring this in a little bit. And that will make your skeleton kind of smile. See? So this way your skeleton is smiling with and with the teeth still staying intact. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll try to get on another live sometime soon. And we'll do again the voting on what you want me to do. All right. Remember, I will be uploading this on YouTube too. So if you don't watch it here you can watch it there not sure when that's going to happen soon but there we go thank you for being here with me and i will see you soon hopefully yeah oh yeah before i go 
the hard drive is, has come in the mail today and the technician is going to be tomorrow between 5 and 8 to install it. So Thursday I'll be running full steam again. Yay! Have a great evening. Goodbye and happy claims.